Welcome to Migrate Australia, the podcast that's dedicated to helping you make your dream of living in Australia a reality. I'm your host, Alexander King, and I'm here to provide you with all the essential information and guidance that you need for a successful move to this incredible, beautiful country. In each episode, we explore different aspects of the migration process, from visa options and application procedures to finding accommodation and adjusting to Australian culture. Our aim is to equip you with the knowledge and resources necessary to make your transition as smooth as possible. Join us as we interview experts in migration, share personal stories of those who've successfully relocated to Australia, and provide you with practical tips and advice to help you make informed decisions every step of the way. So smash that subscribe button to stay updated on our latest episodes, and together we'll navigate the journey of a lifetime and help you turn your Australian dreams into reality. Where do we come in? Well, here at Migration Consultant, we deliver a fully done-for-you service, and this is a service that's got a massive 100% success rate for skilled trades and professionals. How? It begins with a free assessment, which you can access through the link provided in the podcast description or on our webpage below. Okay, so let's get stuck in and explore exactly how a highly skilled tradesperson such as yourself can migrate to Australia independently. So right now, Australia is facing a real pressing issue. That is a shortage of highly skilled tradespeople just like you. So if you're a qualified skilled tradie under the age of 45, you just might be eligible to make that life-changing move to this beautiful country. So let's take a closer look at the steps involved. Okay, so to kickstart your journey down under, you need to meet a specific set of immigration criteria. And here's the quick rundown. One, be aged under 45. Two, score at least 65 Australian immigration points. Three, obtain a positive skills assessment. Four, lodge an expression of interest. Five, receive an invitation to apply. Six, pay the necessary visa fees. And then seven, pass health character background checks. So let's dig a little bit deeper into exactly what all of those criteria mean. So being aged under 45, I think, is is self-explanatory. However, the age limit is taken at the moment that you are invited to apply for your visa, not the moment that you start the process. So that whole process could take anywhere between 12 and 18 months. So if you are over 40, my recommendation would be to get that process started right away Uh, Because even though it may seem like you have until you're 45, you don't. Because the age is taken at the very end of the process and not the start. So the next criteria, that of scoring 65 points, also raises lots and lots of questions. Because while it should be very, very straightforward, as is the case with lots of things, Australian immigration, it's not. And where you think you have points, you find out that you don't. And then where you think you don't have any points, you find out actually there's there's some ways of really boosting up that point score. So my recommendation is that you head over to see our other podcast on exactly how to calculate your immigration points or alternatively scroll down to the comments section or further down the web page, depending on whether you're listening to this podcast on the website or on YouTube and simply follow those links to our free Visa Points Calculator. That will give you all of the information that you need to work out your actual immigration point score as of today. Okay, next criteria, skills assessment. Well, for skilled tradies, skills assessment is a third-party body tied to immigration, and it's their job to say that you are who you say you are, that you have the right skills, the right experience, and the right qualifications. And as you would expect, it's a long, complex process consisting of two distinct stages. Stage one is paperwork and background check, and this is where you need to supply them with all of the information about you, all of your qualifications, all of your transcripts, all of your references, pay slips, pretty much you name it, they want it. And if that sounds complex, don't worry. You can work with me and the team. We've got 100% success rate working with skilled trades, getting them through skills assessment. We've been doing it for the past 20 years and we know the process inside out. But if you really do want to do it yourself, then absolutely follow the instructions on vetassess.com.au. So the assessment body will then review your training and employment evidence to ensure that you have 
the requisite uh, number of years employment experience as a skilled tradie with no formal training or a shorter amount of employment experience with the relevant formal training. And the second stage of the skills assessment is a technical interview and or practical assessment. And this is where you'll be asked a series of questions about your skills and duties as the skilled tradie to really dig in and determine the extent of your knowledge. If a practical assessment is required, then you have to complete a series of work-based tasks that practically demonstrate your, your skills. And lots of people worry about this, but one of the things that I always say is we'll make you absolutely prepared for everything that you're going to encounter in the technical interview and or the practical assessment. So really, if you're a client of ours, don't worry about it. We will make sure that you are fully prepared to move forward through that. But again, if you're an independent applicant and you're doing this process yourself, which is absolutely fine as well, again, follow the instructions on vetassess.com.au and or take a look at migrationconsultant.com, which is our website where we try and be as full as possible with all of the information that you're going to need as a skilled tradie going through that technical interview or practical assessment. So what's all this for? Why do we have to do the skills assessment? Well, after skills assessment, you get issued something called an offshore technical skills record, an OTSR. And it's this certificate, it's this piece of paper that's absolutely critical to both your Australian skilled visa application and also your ability to work in your trade in Australia once you actually get there. So with your OTSR in hand, your offshore technical skills record, now is the time to go on to the next real exciting kind of part of the process, which is lodging your expression of interest with the Australian government. And the absolute requisite for lodging that expression of interest, obviously, as before, is being aged under 45, scoring over 65 points, which we've been through as well, but also having that OTSR in hand, that positive skills assessment. Without the positive skills assessment, you cannot lodge the expression of interest. So this is also the point where you express an interest in your permanent residency visa. So you may or may not have come across two visa types so far in your, in your research. One is called the 189 visa and the other one is called the 190 visa. Now, because you're a highly skilled tradesperson and because you have an occupation on that, that main in-demand list, the MLTSSL, you may be eligible for both of those top tier visas. So what's the difference? Well, you know, they're both permanent residency visas. They both allow you, your family, to live and work in Australia without restriction, come and go as you please, access Medicare, education, financial services, set up a business, work in your trade. Permanent residency also is designed as tentative citizenship. So it's designed to convert to citizenship and dual nationality after a, a certain period of time. But there is one crucial difference. So the 189 visa gives you complete autonomy. You're allowed to live and work anywhere in Australia that you like from day one. So the 190 visa has an element of state sponsorship and state nomination. So this is where a particular state or territory in Australia has said, yep, absolutely, we want these guys. And as a result, they actually gift you extra migration points to help increase your score. So the payback of that is that they expect you to live and work in that particular state for a period of two years. And then obviously after that two year period, you're free to live and work anywhere in Australia, just the same as the 189. Okay, so now you've lodged your expression of interest and it's time for the waiting game. This is the period when your EOI sits in the pool of all the other candidates and you eagerly await that invitation to apply that ITA for your visa. It's a critical phase and timing can really be everything. But, <laughs> there's always a but. Here's a secret weapon that you can deploy while you wait. And this is the IELTS English test, I-E-L-T-S. This is an opportunity to boost your points and potentially speed up the process of receiving that all important invitation to apply. Now, with IELTS, you can score up to 20 extra points depending on your English proficiency. So if you are proficient in English, that's 10 extra points. And if you've got superior skills in English, then that's 20 extra points. And these points can make a significant difference in the overall points tally and could really catapult you ahead of all the others in the pool, increasing your chances of receiving that invitation to apply much sooner. 
Okay, so next stage. This is where it gets really, really interesting and really exciting. Congratulations, you've received your invitation to apply. This is a massive milestone in your journey to Australia. It means that your expression of interest has been selected from the pool and the Australian government has invited you to proceed with the next stage of your visa application, which is the formal final application before your visas are granted. So this is where you pay the visa fee, okay? Um, and you have 60 days to do that. So once the visa fee is paid, then you receive what's called a HAP code, H-A-P. And you take that HAP code and you go and arrange your health checks and your medicals. And this is time also to start getting the uh, background checks, your, your police checks in place. And then there's nothing more to do. Then it's over to the Australian authorities to do their part. Okay, the visa processing in stage involves a thorough assessment of your application. Everything needs to match up. All the I's need to be dotted. All the T's need to be crossed. And this includes verifying your documents, reviewing your eligibility again, and again ensuring that you meet all the necessary criteria. And then, weirdly, and it is weirdly, because you've been through so much to get to this point, but when your visas are actually accepted and, and, and issued, granted, you receive an email. That's it. No fanfare, no, no special announcement. Literally, it's just an email that will appear in your inbox, ding, one morning, and it says that your, 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 your visas have been approved. So um, a very, very exciting time, but a very, uh, very strange time as well, because as I say, it's uh, after all that you've been through to get to this point, to receive a simple email makes it seem like uh, it makes it seem like you've been through a uh, more of a formality than the uh, than the roller coaster ride that you've just been on. Okay, so from point of visas being granted, you you then have twelve months in which to activate those those visas. So you don't need to emigrate immediately, but you do need to take a trip to Australia within twelve months and physically pass through immigration. You and any of your uh, dependents and any family members who are also included also need to do that. Get through, get through immigration, get through the border, get your visas activated, then that's your permanent residency activated. And from that point forward, you can enter and leave Australia as, as much as you choose. Okay, so you may have a ton of other questions and I absolutely expect that to be the case. What I've given you is a really good, clear, overview of the process from start to finish in migrating to Australia as a skilled tradesperson. But if you want any further information, if you want a free consultation, actually with myself, um, simply go to migrationconsultant.com, click on the free assessment, fill out all the details, and the final question you'll see says, please help us by including any further relevant information. Well, in that box, if you write that you've listened to this podcast and that you'd like a free consultation with myself, Alexander King, let us know in that one. It will come straight through to me and I will get that arranged with you. And in fact, it would be a real pleasure to answer any and all questions you may have about the process. Um, so, yeah, that's all from me today. And as I say, hit that subscribe button and together we can make this journey as successful as possible for, for you and your loved ones. OK, thank you.